Praise God, praise God. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries, and I'm going to jump right into this, no pun intended, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, so the title of this message is Double Dutch Faith, okay? Now, when I was a little girl, there would um, we would be outside jumping rope, okay? <laughs> but in that jumping rope, there was the more intense version called Double Dutch. So let me describe it. Maybe not everybody's familiar with it. Um, I don't want to assume. <laughs> See, double dutch was no ordinary jumping rope. It wasn't the regular, okay? If there were two people that would be turning, one on each end, and then and there each there were two ropes involved, right? So they're turning the rope, each one on their end, right? And then the person who's gonna jump in. They're standing there, you gotta wait for the precise time, and there's a rhythm to it, right? So you got the two on the end, and they're turning the rope, okay, fine. And then you got the person who's gonna jump in, right? And you gotta catch that beat, you gotta catch, so you kinda like, and you're just waiting, you're just waiting. And then when it's the right time, you jump in. Okay, so it would be, um, you know, the, the one person is going to jump in, but then as it became more like a sport and entertainment, you would have more than one person jump in and all of that, and they have competitions and all of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just the playing outside, girls outside playing, turning rope. There you go. Okay. Now, to jump in, you had to catch that rhythm. Remember that now, okay? And it was like, a, it was as though an opening would come that you were waiting for, and then just jump in. If you missed the timing, <laughs> If you missed the timing of that opening or miscalculated the beat, that rope would catch you and you would get all tangled up in it. It would, it would snap you like, you know, getting hit with a rope. Okay, fine. Now, I admired those that could get in there and, and in that opening and in between the ropes and they would get in and they could jump and turn around and touch the ground and all of that stuff. I really admired them. I wasn't one of those, okay? <laughs> that rope would catch me almost every time. Not all the time, but I would get entangled in it, and it wasn't a pretty sight. You see, I would overthink it. So the whole thing, and I'm standing here, and I'm waiting for the right time, and I would overthink it, and I would, um, and it would basically be fear. <laughs> fear that I would mess up. Fear that I would miss the opening or the opportunity, um, that I would be teased for my poor performance and <laughs> trying to get this thing done and jump in there. Um, everybody's watching, but actually it felt like they were watching me to see how I was going to fare, but they were actually waiting for their turn. And here I am taking forever. And I know that they probably want to just, just jump in, <laughs> but I had to wait. Had to get it right, okay? <laughs> Let's look at Matthew uh, chapter 8, and I'm going to start reading at verse 18. And here's the thing. The fear, along with all those other reasons and stuff, but I think the biggest fear was that rope hurt. <laughs> They're turning the rope fast. You know, you got to catch it. Okay, fine. I'll keep going. Anyway, Matthew chapter 8, verse 18. And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds have the air and the and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me go and bury my father first. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. There's a great multitude out there to be reached, okay? <laughs> Jesus acknowledges that he is, he is ready, he's the head, he's ready. But the place to lay his head, which would be the body, is not yet fully prepared and ready. There is work to do, God's kingdom work, of, of sharing the gospel, introducing the message of salvation, forgiveness of sins, restoration unto, the, unto, unto God, deliverance from the jurisdiction of the devil, and all of that is in salvation. This message is mainly, this message here, Double Dutch Faith, is mainly for the believers in Christ Jesus. There is work to do the presentation of the good news of Jesus Christ, that others may believe and come into the fold of the body of believers in him. 
But many of us wait, have excuses. I have all these other responsibilities. Let me finish and accomplish these first. Am I really ready? What if I mess up? What will people say? You know they're watching. What if I don't do this right or the timing's right? What if I don't have enough? Is it my time to jump in? We could stand there like this, like me, waiting, waiting, waiting to get in. <laughs> we could stand there like that with all the excuses and some of the reasons are valid. Or we could go on and respond to Jesus' statement for a prepared body of believers of which we are a part, but are also to participate in building it up. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 and both of these um portions of scripture are from the new king james version matthew 9 35 then jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, I pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now there are the, the dedicated ones already doing the work, teaching, preaching, administering love and power of God for healing, caring and outreach with signs, wonders and miracles following the examples just as, as Jesus gave us the example, we're following him. But this is a work for the entire body, not a select few. At some point, you, born again believer in Jesus Christ, are expected to participate. You cannot just keep getting fed the word, receiving the benefits of the dedication of the few. Seek the Lord for your part in the plan for his body, building it up, reaching others. It may not be for you to go out into the fields to be the one who is to jump into the turning ropes. It may be for you to give, being the ones, one of the ones turning the rope in, by your supporting financially for the work to continue. Now, something to note here, too. I mentioned the one to jump in and the ones to turn. But in Double Dutch, in the actual game of Double Dutch, everybody gets a turn to do everything. So it's, it rotates. Everyone gets an opportunity to turn and everybody gets an opportunity to jump in. God will definitely reveal which position at every given encounter or setting for you. So you're not going to always be the one that's just going to uh, 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 do the, all the work. You may be called for that, but there may be times that you'll be called to do some turning, some sewing, some giving. And he'll let you know what for each time. So basically what I'm saying is we should not ever assume that just because we did it a certain way or held a certain position or that was the work we were to do at one time, that that's it. That's, it. that's all we're going to ever do. No. Listen for God. He'll let us know, are we turning today? <laughs> are we turning in this? Are we jumping in on this? Are we sowing? Are we giving? Are we serving? Um, are we cleaning? Because not all of it is the, the glamorous, so-called glamorous, when you're on the, on the stage or behind the podium or, at, you know, with the mic. Some of it, you maybe you're called to clean. Maybe you're called to, to um, let's see. I know a, a particular ministry that we're um, really close to. They have food giveaways, but not like food pantry stuff. This particular pastor, Pastor Lori Hartman, she she feels that, People are always, you know, who are, are in, in a time of brokenness or, or needing something, stuff is shoved at them. Here, here's a bag of groceries. Here you go. Here's some clothes. Here you go. But the way she's, the Lord put on her heart to set it up is to just set it out like a bounty. Set it up so when they come through, they get to choose what they want. They, and, 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 and then in that, while they're looking and they're choosing and, you know, going through, then she and her team can minister to the people and heal them and feed them in more ways than one. So there are all different kinds of ways that God may have us serving, that God may have us turning, or may God may have us 
jumping in. Amen? Yes, this is the time to get in the games, the game, so to speak. This is no game. This is real work, but you know what I mean. The beat to catch is that of the heart of God, his rhythm and his timing. By his Holy Spirit, he leads us. In our fellowship with him, he reveals the way, the when, the how, and the to whom for encounters to, to share his love. He sets it up. We listen for him. Lord, what do you want me to say? Because not everybody is supposed to be like with the, the, the difference between the food pantry and there's nothing wrong with that. But then there's also the way that the Lord put on Pastor Lori's heart that she's supposed to, to, to reach out to the community. Some will be more pronounced. Some of these opportunities will be more pronounced while others may appear to, appear to be happenstance. Some may be more organized while others are more casual. Some may take a more authoritative approach while others are more of interaction. None of this is for us to angst over. It is the work of the Lord and he prepares and equips us accordingly. We just need to say yes to him in word and deed. We just need to catch the rhythm of his heart, which is always of love, and then jump in. Go on and jump in. Don't stand there and delay with the excuses and the real and the reasons and the, you know, and, okay, I know I got to do it. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to call. I'm going to give. I'm going to sow. I'm going to, enough with the I'm going to, no more. Uh-uh. Jump in. Having no fear, but only trust and reliance on him. God, to lead us in what to say or do at his precise timing, having faith in God that he will accomplish what he set for us to do. We're the workers. Think of yourself as like a, um, well, like, like he said, we're vessels. We're his vessels to be used by him. To, he, he will flow through us to get it done. So our faith is in him that is going to get done, not faith in ourselves that maybe we'll get it right. Salvation establishes the relationship with him, with God. Discipleship along with lifestyle intimacy, that personal communion and communication with him, establishes the fellowship. Increasing our confidence and wherewithal to recognize the opening and timing of the rope and seize those moments to tell of the great love of God that awaits all, all mankind. God loves all. We need to get out there and let them know that it's there, it's awaiting, it's available. Amen? That's all I have for you today. Come on now, don't, don't, don't be out there. Come on in. Oh, jump on in. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Father, I pray that this message will resonate in the hearts of your believers. I pray, Father, that if it's a word of correction for some, that they will receive it and no condemnation sets in, but they will go on and they will get in there and they will jump in and they will listen for you for what you will have them to participate in. Father, I thank you that our faith is in you, that all that you set for us to do, we accomplish it and we have victory and success and we um, are able to glorify you, not in and of ourselves, but because you have equipped us, you've called us, prepared us, equipped us, and you cause us to hear the beat of your heart, to hear the timing, to recognize the opening, and jump on in. All for your glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, praise God. That's all I have for you today. Blessings to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye.